one sat alone beside the highway begging his eyes were blind the light he could not see he clutched his old rags and shivered in the shadows then jesus came and bade his darkness flee It's time to open the Word once again with evangelist Lester Roloff on the Family Altar Program. Glory for all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. My father, and I don't know why anybody ever called that dude father, divine. He wasn't father and he wasn't divine. That's a misnomer. And so the head of this cup that's responsible for about seven or eight or nine hundred deaths with little children. Now you talk about child abuse. Let the human resources get after that. That'll occupy a lot of their time from here on. And dear friend, cut religion is built on fear, superstition, and blindness. Those three things that's built on. They were scared to death They were not ready to die, and they ran a false front talking about how beautiful death is. Ah, listen. And I want to give you something else. That type of thing is going to get worse because the Bible said the very elect would be deceived but for the shortening of the days. You'd say, well, how can I know, Brother Roloff? that I'm right, and how can I know that you're right and that you're not misleading us and you're not throwing a spell of hypnotism over us? i tell you two ways you can find out. The King James Version and the leadership of the Holy Spirit, and number three, the fruit that we bear. i tell you, that fruit test will go a long ways. Man, let me tell you something. If I walk in the valley where my good uh, North Carolina friends have been. And if I come up under one of those 700 tangelo trees and I reach up and one that's already turned colors and has that nice orange looking, and if I just kind of cut a little bit off of the top of it and put it up to my mouth and mash, and that juice goes in every direction. It looks like a tangelo tree. It looks like a tangelo. It tastes like a tangelo. My prediction is it's a tangelo. (laughs) I mean, the debate's over when that juice runs down my throat and I know what it tastes like. Now then, I can tell you a Christian too. By the way he looks, by the way he acts, by his color, and by the way he tastes. Brother, I can tell you the Lord. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, tonight I'm going to spend the time in the department of no so. I want you to turn with me to the book of John. We're going to start in chapter 1. I'm going to give you what John says about salvation. Now, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all three of them said, God said, Matthew... I want you to present my son in a certain light and you take a picture of him and Mark, in your 16 chapters, I want you to get another good snapshot of Jesus and Luke, I want you to get over on the other side and shoot another picture and there'll be three synoptic dimensions of Jesus. Now, we won't have any conflict, 
But you fellas will just write it up as the Holy Spirit gives it to you so we have three separate harmonious views of Jesus. And then to me, God said to John, John, he said, I'm ready. What's the order? He said, I'd like for you to present Jesus as a great Savior. I want you to present the salvation plan. I'm going to have a man to come in maybe at midnight by the name of Nicodemus, and I want you to get him saved for me. And I want you to tell him about uh, uh, Moses in the wilderness. And I, I want you, and he said, I'd like for you to present the eternity of the Word. And then I'd like, before you close, to tell him why we're writing a book. And John said, I'll do it. And so he starts off by saying, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, that's the virgin birth, isn't it? Now then, in that same chapter, in verse 12, he said, as many, now he came to that sad verse and said, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power, authority, or the right to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now we started. Now we started. And so, I think I see somebody not listening. I hate to be slowed up like this. Somebody's missing the blessing. Get with us now. The devil's stealing away the seed. You're going home bankrupt tonight. Get with it. Believe it if you want to receive it and get a blessing. Now, in John chapter 1, he said, As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. Now then, in chapter 3, we have the most unusual recording and the really only one of the new birth. And did you know that the new birth was preached by and to a man that was educated, um, smart, religious, up in years, and he said, Nicodemus, as Moses lifted up the serpent. Now, before he got Nicodemus to that place, Nicodemus was saying, how? Well, how? He said, how can a man, when he is old, be born? You mean, and he, it shows you how dumb a smart man can be. How stupid a religious man can be. But I tell you one thing, he was interested in the miracles. He showed some interest. And so uh, he said, can a man look up his mama and be born again? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, no. He said that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And Nicodemus, if you got born 74 more times, they would be 75 lost Nicodemus. Because that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Man, one physical birth is enough to take anybody to hell. Don't want to be born no more like that. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye must be born again. Now, that is exactly what the average church member knows nothing about. And boys, I'll announce to you right now, and Brother Stan, you can tell them again when you get home if you want to. We fail with every boy that comes here that does not get born again. Now, we can squirt religious cologne on you, and you can join the church, and as I've said many times, and be baptized and simonized and capsized, but you'll never change, fellas, until you're born again on the inside. And I like that good amen roar you're giving me. You're not going to get any better until you get born again. Amen. That's it. Oh, listen, just like I was down at the lighthouse the other day, a probation officer came with us, and uh, we got down there, and he said, how's uh, so-and-so doing? 
Well, he said, uh, oh, on the outside, but he's just not saved, so we're, we're not getting anywhere with him. He was right. All we've done, just feed him. And uh, he's cleaned up a little bit. And uh, he's better on the outside, but on the inside, he's still a lost sinner. And so Nicodemus raised the question how? And so Jesus said, well, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. What's that blowing? He said, wind. He said, where is it coming from? He said, I don't know. He said, well, where is it going? He said, I don't know that either. Boy, had him hemmed up real quick, didn't he? He said, do you see it? No, he said, I can't see it either. He said, you mean you're a ruler of the Jews and you can't an answer simple questions about the weather and wind? And he went on. He said, now listen. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell from whence it cometh and whither it goeth. And then he said, even so is the work of the Spirit. You can't see the Spirit, but you can tell when he's blowing. And you can tell when he gets you a-going. And he can, you can tell when he makes you start a-glowing. Oh, yes, you can. Listen, I found that one thing in, in life. It took me nearly 64 years to do it, but I got her down. What I can explain is not worth explaining. That's the reason I get so tired of piddling with a bunch of unsaved goats and trying to explain to them what us sheep are doing. I just wish I could say to them, now listen, if you want to know about us sheep, let's get rid of that goat hide you got on. <laughs> well, I'm just simply saying, there's a heap of difference between a goat and a sheep. We'll come to that in a minute. Now, Jesus said, Nicodemus, I'm going to get something else over to you. I see we're not getting anywhere about the wind. You don't understand about that. He said, do you remember back in the Old Testament about Moses and the fix they got in and, and the people began to complain and murmur and whimper and whine? And, and uh, they said, we, our soul loathed this light for you. And they said, uh, they, they complained against God, they criticize God and God's man. That always happens like that. And so he said, uh, do you remember what they did? Yes, he said, uh, I know I'm pretty well up on all that. Moses um, built a serpent, a brazen serpent, and put it upon a pole and went around the camp and the people and told those folks that were bitten by the snake. Y'all just look and live. Look and live. He said, did it work? He, oh, yeah, he said, according to the record, it worked. He said, really? Oh, yeah, he said, it worked. Said, That's, you know, now then, he said, all right, Moses, just kindly fasten your seatbelt because here it comes. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, Nicodemus, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Nicodemus began to squirm a little bit, I imagine. And he said, well, I hadn't thought about it. And he said, Nicodemus, God sent not his son into the world to condemn Nicodemus or the world, but that the world or Nicodemus through him might be saved. Now, here's the good news. Nicodemus, he that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Nicodemus said, yeah, I feel it now. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, listen, the greatest preacher preaching the new birth. 
Think about it. Think about it. Jesus. Preaching Jesus. Preaching the Lamb that would soon be lifted up on an old rugged cross. Not only did Jesus save before, He saved during and He saved after. But it was all done through the Lamb that was lifted up on the cross without spot and without blemish. And so, He said, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now let's run over to John 5, 24 for a moment. Verily, verily. He says he's fixing to preach the new birth again. No, but he's going to give two verilies. And anybody can understand it if you just know it's very, very important. That's it. Verily, verily, I say unto he that heareth my word, believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You say, what did he say? I give you everlasting. I give you eternal. That's the only two kind of salvation he'll give you. Everlasting, the length of it. Eternal, the quality of it. And as long as he lives, you and I as children of God will live. We're secure. I wish I could get you to believe it's hard. Sometimes people think that you're uh, maybe a little presumptuous or arrogant to say, but I'm going to say it because I'm preaching grace tonight. I'm just as saved as Jesus is. You say you reckon you'll ever be lost? Yes, if Jesus ever gets lost, we'll get lost together. You say you suppose the devil ever take you to hell? Number one, when he takes Jesus, I'll go with him and walk right down through the burning flame singing, if Jesus goes with me, I'll go anywhere. Tis heaven to me, wherever I be, since he is right here. And the devil said, get him out of here. He's not even sweating. That's right. You see, if you could, you know, old Dr. Gamble was preaching. And Dr. Carroll, Dr. Gamble, great friend back yonder, well, almost a century ago. And Dr. Ca Dr. Gamble was up preaching, and he just got so excited. He said, I'll bet you. And He's preaching on the grace of God and Dr. Carroll right in the meeting said, Dr. Gamble or Brother Gamble, you're not supposed to bet. He said, I know it, but if I'd bet on anything, it'd be the grace of God. <laughs> yes. All right. He that believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Now then, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's wade off into the deepest water, the clearest water, purest water, and the surest water we could ever get into. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. This is the masterpiece of maximum security. Here it is. Chapter 10, and we're going to start at verse 10. Now, you know this is the door chapter. He didn't say, I'm a door. He said, I'm the door. I'm the door. Then he said in chapter 10 and verse 10, last part, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf a coming, leaveth the sheep, fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I'm the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Now, let's park there just a minute. There's a verse in the Bible when Jesus sees them coming in. 
for judgment, he looks at them, and those sad, tragic, permanent words fall from his unfailing and infallible mouth when he said, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I never knew you. Now, folks, just sensible logic would tell you that if you were ever saved, he did know you. Now, you put that down. Jesus just don't have a forgetter. And if you were ever saved, and then you were lost again, Jesus could never say, I never knew you, because you could say, Lord, don't you remember when I got saved the first time? You remember before I got lost the third time? I was saved a couple of times. You know that. I mean, you had to know me. Didn't you know me? Dear friend, I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm telling you one thing. If you've ever known Christ and Christ, and you can't know him without him knowing you, and when you meet him, he meets you. Now, you don't have to record his name in your little book, but he records your name in his big book, and he'll never erase it. You to preach anything or believe anything less than that is to dishonor God and preach a little God and a little salvation. Oh, you'd say this is dangerous. It's dangerous not to preach it. It's dangerous uh, to overlook any truth in the Bible. All you need to do is believe it. I didn't make it up. It's in the book. I know what everlasting means. I know what eternal means. I know what the Bible means when he said I'm sealed up by the Holy Spirit. Let's quickly go and we'll start here the next time, chapter 10, and we'll begin at verse 27, my sheep, my sheep. He didn't say my goats, my sheep. Hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. One of the terms in the Bible for the Christian is sheep. A sheep is so different from a goat. I go out to the mountains usually in December, and there's some old mountain goats up there. A goat's different. A goat's a daredevil. I mean, you'll see him get on the top of a rock and look down. A sheep is humble. A sheep hears the voice of its shepherd. Did you know, and this is good, you've heard that a sheep will always follow the shepherd and never a hireling. There's one exception. Did you know that there is a sheep that will follow and hireling or false shepherd? You know which one it is? It's a sick sheep. If that sheep gets sick, it'll lose its sense of loyalty to the good shepherd. Brother, a healthy sheep will follow the shepherd. Now, if a sheep does follow a hireling, it's still a sheep. It doesn't turn into a goat just because it gets weak and feels bad. No. Now, he said, I know my sheep. Now, a sheep is different. Uh, a sheep bears wool. A sheep will lay down in the shearing lot and uh, you can just take the shears and just shear it right down close and they just lay there, you know. As a sheep is dumb before her shear, that means still, quiet. Sure, you can have my wool. Appreciate you getting it off of me. Mm. Man, I'm tired of that old wool. I'm hot. I'll, feel, I'll be healthy with the wool off of me. Yes? But you talk about an old goat. Listen, an old goat will run out on the brush and rub his off. That's right. That's well. A goat is a lost man. He'll spend his own beer, tobacco, liquor. He'll get out there in the brush and he'll rub all his off out there. He won't give nothing. Dear friend, there's a, a goat. 
a sheep, you don't find a sheep mean and, 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 and boisterous, but an old goat, you know. Hell, you, ever, you hear about a goat button? Hmm? Well, have you ever heard anybody say, well, of course, he's a pretty good man, but I like his preaching, but sound like a goat to me. Yeah, right? A lot of difference. Yes, as a lamb was led to the slaughter, opens not his mouth. A Christian can go through a lot of things and not complain, but just count it all joy to follow the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through, amen, the valley, going on through it. And he said, and I like this, and we need this more, than I think. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Oh, that's a picture. It's a war picture. The enemies come in. And uh, the good shepherd said, Y'all, sit down over there and behave yourself. We'll take care of you later. And he calls his sheep together and said, Now, I'll tell you what, let's do it. I've got a big meal prepared. Thou preparest the table before me in the prayer. Now, y'all just eat. Now, don't get indigestion. Just You can look at them. Y'all just go ahead and eat now. Your enemy's over there, but I'm not going to let you go fight them till I feed you up and I want you to be strong and ready to tear them apart. Now, I know that's a picture of protection, really. That's a picture. The enemy's over there, and here we are over here eating at the table. And the enemy over there being held back. Oh, God has promised us victory. Oh, there never was such a time in all of our lives as right now. The field is white already to harvest. The labors are so few, and it'll soon be over. I must close. A daddy stood at the graveside. They'd ship the body of his soldier boy back without any life in it. And when that casket came in with that United States flag draped over it, and it went out to the cemetery, and the daddy thought about those blessed times when that little boy went fishing with him and hunting with him and sat it on his knees and told his daddy he's the best daddy in all the world. And yet here he is, going off and died on a foreign field. And the daddy, before he knew what he was saying, said, where was God? And my boy got killed. And the preacher gently and firmly put his hand on his shoulder and said the same place he was when his son was killed on Calvary. Ah, young people, why on earth couldn't you give your life to somebody that loves you like that? Boys, why wouldn't that be an incentive to follow after somebody born in a manger, lived without even the comforts of his own civilization, died, tried with no lawyer. No mercy while he suffered, bled, and died. Why? And yet, all the sweet songs are written about him today. Ah, listen. The name of Jesus is so sweet. Brother, how, how come they write songs like that? I love its music. 
to repeat. It makes my joys full and complete. That worthy name of Jesus, Jesus. Oh, how sweet the name. Jesus, every day just the same. Jesus, let all of us saints proclaim his worthy praise forever. Why wouldn't we want to do that? Why wouldn't God's people, after all that he's done for us, want to lift up his name and sing praises unto him? Sing with me. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and the righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on on Christ the solid rock I stand all other just sinking all of the ground is when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before the throne oh, His covenant, his blood, support me in this old whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and my stay. On oh, Christ the solid rock I stand. The ground is sinking sand. Oh, other ground is sinking sand. Oh, how I love Jesus. Sing it. our heads I hope tonight you received inside information and believed it our father as we close this service tonight singing that old song that says must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free no there's a cross for everyone, there's a cross for me. The consecrated cross I'll bear till death shall set me free. Then go home, crowned to wear. There'll be a crown for me. Lord, I pray tonight that you'll help us to take seriously me. Lord, in this unusual time when my soul has been exercised, with the greatest challenge I've ever known. Lord, I pray to pull out the very roots of sin, whatever could be wrong, 
attitudes, selfishness. God bless us as we wait before you tonight. Bless our guests and visitors. If there's some lonely, trembling sinner, and some are here tonight I'm burdened for, I pray that they'll repent of their sin and come to know Jesus Christ. While we sing this song, how many of you would like to come and say, Lord, I do believe. Must Jesus bear the cross? Must Jesus the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's Let's introduce our prayer time evening and morning and at noon. Mothers and dads, some of you here in the altar with your children, pray with them, confess sin, ask Jesus to forgive. Evening and morning and at noon. Evening and morning and at noon. That's what it's going to take. That's brought victories already. And others will come. And he shall hear my voice. He shall hear my voice. Evening and morning. Once more evening and morning. without the piano and the organ I want you with all the faith you've got to believe with us as we sing evening and morning and at noon will I pray will I pray and cry loud Father, bless our guests tonight, the visitors who are here. Father, I pray for our young people. I pray tonight that you'll give us the faith that, that claims the attention of God and that he can honor. And I pray that we may see the greatest downfall of heavenly manna we've ever seen, that will honor God the world's looking on now, and I pray that they might know that our God is not dead. Hear us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today on the Family Altar Program with Lester Roloff. You may listen to the preaching and the special music of the Family Altar Program 24 hours a day 
when you visit our ministry website, roloff.org. We love hearing from our listeners. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, please write to us at Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises, P.O. Box 100, Fort Thomas, Arizona, 85536. Again, that's Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises, P.O. Box 100, Fort Thomas, Arizona, 85536. This broadcast is made possible by the prayers and financial support of listeners like you. Thank you for partnering with us and remember that Christ is the answer.